Okay, how's it going, YouTube? We have officially come to a conclusion for Major 1. And with that, we've got some tangible results. International competition playing each other, finding out who is better than the others. But with that, it's always kind of tough to discern who I personally believe is the best of the best. Who would win if stacked up against each other again? Future planning. Things that I think we're going to see as we continue on through the rest of the season. Uh, easier said than done. We're going to jump over to the other screen and we're going to take a look at two things. Number one, we've got my top 10 power rankings. We do have one honorable mention because it's always cool to talk about or give some love and attention to other teams. If you guys want to join us, twitch.tv forward slash all we hang out here uh, pretty much every day. Also, like, subscribe, notifications. But with that said, first one on the list is going to be none other than power. Uh, pretty happy with this one. I think power in particular tends to be a team that loves to go to round five. I don't know what it is about Torsas. He always does it, but he always finds a way, no matter the circumstances, to find himself in that 2-2 round in Swiss, trying to fight into top eight. And they just haven't been able to do it. With that in mind, though, I look at this power roster and I go, you know what? There was a lot of conversation between them and Pioneers. The conversation was Pioneers is a team on land that usually performs better. Power online looks dominant, but usually worse on land. And I'm like, eh, I don't know how I feel about that with the new build. But I think that power roster continues to prove that they are competitive. They do have moments and they are better than the competition below them. And I think that's the great separator is if I look at power and I say, okay, between rule one, pioneers, elevate limitless, they're going to win every single time. OG maybe could be a toss up. I think power OG is a fight. Maybe you put those in the conversation. Um, depending on what that head to head is, I honestly don't know if I convincingly pick OG. I also don't know if I pick power every time. I think it's a game five, flip a coin, which I think is cool, but we want to give love and attention to other regions as well. So we have power there. Um, I will be saying that in this top 10, I will not be putting teams that did not attend. It's very tough for me. I can make preemptive decisions about what some of these roster changes, maybe the Magnifico thing happens and they do bring a chronic or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and you, maybe you give them a nod, um, as like a top 10, but the difficulty is that is speculation. I don't have results to justify it. I think Johnny and his top 10 put oxygen in that, but I'm like, well, they performed worse than Magnifico. I personally am not going to put those in. So that's what I'm basing this off of. That's where I'm at, okay? We do have a team and I had some difficulties with this one, but I'm going with Luminosity. Um, and I'm gonna reveal number nine at the same time, just because I think it provides a little bit of context. Um, I need this color. Um, I just missed it. Where is it? Oop. So I think between luminosity and complexity, I think the only reason I have complexity is for two reasons. Number one, even though I said, I don't want to speculate and stuff. I do think the Diaz edition, if it ends up becoming true is going to be positive. Uh, I think Ray's bull and CRR have proven that they are quite competitive on land. And even with their strength, of schedule, their losses came to vitality K Corp and five in Gen G Gen V Gen G looked like they could have won the whole thing. Uh, once they got into that final match and played against mates where mates went to went to the distance against just about everybody in one goal games um but i think between these two they did play head to head complexity did beat them i think complexity is only going to get better um but i do want to put luminosity in the top 10 because one same very resilient they continue to show up they continue to make the the final round no matter what things look like i will say though that luminosity based upon their results they got swept by furia they lost to complexity. So it's like, I have to for the direct head to head. And the reason why still is because I think based upon the style that they play, based upon the way that they are building with, uh, with Kev Pert and Greg, I think formulaically, like the, the way that they approach the game is right. It's just between nerves with cheese's first land and everything else. I think they were held back a little bit, but we got to see a glimpse of that against vitality because that vitality game, most of us would have been like, yeah, that should be, Vitality should clap the ever living heck out of, out of, uh, out of a team like LG, in my opinion. And we saw what Vitality was fully capable of when they played, I think, G2 in that semifinal match. But I do think that LG has some moments. I think they have some things there that they should be very happy about. And as they continue to get more comfortable on LAN as a, as a team, you could see them potentially bump into that top eight. But um, it's a tough fight. It's a very tough fight. At number eight, though, I think this one was pretty, pretty clear cut is going to be Furia. Um, I think Furia, although they looked amazing in Swiss, you're talking a one goal difference or a one game difference. And all of a sudden they're not 3-0 and the number one offense statistically. That's why I hate some of the stats in Rocket League. Like 
Yes, they're number one statistically because they are 3-0 and at an advantageous situation, putting up a bunch of shots to win. It's like, it's a very, a very small sample size of what creates that narrative. But I think if you're looking at in the head-to-heads, if you look at the top eight round, I personally can't pick Furia confidently over any of the other teams. I think they'll be competitive. I think they may go the distance. I think they could go toe-to-toe. But I think if I'm looking at Furia versus any of the other seven teams in top eight, I probably have them losing every time. Um, And there could be upsets. There could be outliers where they do play upset. But I think as of the current moment, like Furia is definitely a top eight team, but I do not have them beating the teams in those conversations. I think Vitality was very happy to get that draw. um, And rightfully so. Uh, With that said, number seven and maybe a fall from grace from my opinion, but... Um, our first EU team is going to be Team BDS. Um, BDS is a team that I really enjoy. Uh, you guys have heard me and seen me in my predictions talk about what they're doing within Europe. But I think there is something that has been an ongoing narrative when they get to LAN. Uh, and it's Monkey Moon. I think Monkey Moon is one of the generational greats. I think he is arguably one of the best players in the world. But there is definitely a mental factor that when things don't go the right way or when he is handling adversity... I think he has a hard time vocalizing or communicating effectively with his teammates. And that could be because he does have a rookie. Like, Drawley answers have been there. Like, Drawley has proven that he is that guy. Uh, and we talked about that. We talked about as this team grows and develops, you're going to get a, a player that with Monkey Moon, if Drawley is aggressive and leads the charge, Monkey Moon can go into position and do whatever he needs to do and they can be successful. And they did that. I think BDS played quite well this weekend or this past weekend. You know, their only loss was the team that won the whole thing. Uh, they put up a really good fight against G2, but other than that, they didn't really get tested, if I'm being honest. Nothing against Elevate, nothing against Power, but like BDS didn't really get tested until they played a struggling G2, and then G2 is like, all right, time to wake up, and and G2 dominated that game. Like The matches were close, for sure, but G2, control-wise, their game to lose. It was their game to lose, so... I'm not saying that BDS doesn't have potential to beat some of these other teams, but I do think when it comes to starting the schedule, everybody else looked a little bit stronger. And I will stay with Devil's Advocate. I expect BDS to continue to climb, but we joked about it on stream. We talked about it. There is a there's a key moment in most BDS series that when Monkey Moon is playing, and then there's that that release of frustration, and he and you know he kind of leans back. The mentals chalked expect them to lose the series. And he doesn't have someone like Rise to balance that out. It's why I appreciate Rise as much as I do and why they were able to get further in the tournament is because there was that balancing act with it. It's why Rise and Vatira is so good together in my opinion, but um, it, Monkey Moon's got to be that vocal leader. He's got to be, even when the times are frustrating, he's got to not be afraid. And he could be this. Again, I don't have a peel behind the curtain. Maybe Eversax is helping with this stuff too and why the addition to, uh, to Alpine was so good, but... There, there is the complication of finding someone that can be that voice of reason to say, hey, this isn't good enough. We need to make these adjustments. We need to do this thing. And unfortunately, one, I don't speak French. Two, I haven't gotten to talk to these guys. I would love for someone to, to talk to them specifically and be like, are we blowing this out of proportion? But body language wise, I think it tells the story and it's been pretty consistent. So um, BDS is still a good team. I think they could bump up at any point, but that's where I've got them right now. Uh, up next in the list is going to be one that some may not may not agree with but it's going to be genji um genji i think had some moments where they looked kind of sloppy and kind of ugly but i think overall as a team when they lock in and things are good i think chronic had a worldie of a day uh in that quarterfinal and he looked in in incredible form but i think genji as a team has really proven themselves i I think they continue to show improvement uh between regional three and then at the major uh the crazy thing though is that when you look at these teams all together as a collective there was problems like they did not they did not look convincing to me competitive sure but not convincing like i think we have a different conversation on genji if they close it out against furia because then they're 3-0 and now they're a number a number one seed number two seed uh realistically they'd be the two seed because of game differential for mates and all of a sudden now furia you have genji playing vitality and i think again probably another close series but genji could potentially win that so I think it's complicated to really pick, and I think this is this area is really tough for me to give you a power ranking. But I think Genji again, uh, based upon the results and the evidence, based upon the things that they're putting together, they're a competitive team. They are resilient. They find ways to win when they need to. And while yes, it wasn't the cleanest results, their losses coming to a team that finished second 
And then K-Corp, who I still think is the best team in the world, which a bit of a spoiler, but I think K-Corp as a team, they are very good. So I, I think you can talk about it and say, hey, they won the matches they needed to. They found a way in. So, and so I got Genji there. At number five, we're going with Vitality. And I think Vitality as of right now, former world champs, I don't think you take it away from them. I think they're a team that has been struggling to find their groove. And I've, I've talked about this in previous in previous weeks as well. I think Vitality is dealing with loss for the very first time. You know, when they brought in Zen, they, they didn't lose ever. It was, it was Farah. Farah has won now eight events in a row outside of this recent major. You know, his, his Supreme has ended and you bring in a new coach that as much as I love Fairy and has a ton of experience has never coached before. Like they're learning the ropes. They're learning how to lose, how to make adjustments because for those that don't know, like the first time you lose an RLCS, it, it's different. You got to find ways to bounce back. You have to make adjustments because when they came in, they're like, our player style is the best and we're going to keep doing what we're doing and it's working. Well, now we have to make adjustments. Now we have to read and make reactions to other teams. We have to find ways to improve. It's the first time they've had to do that. And that stuff doesn't happen overnight. So I think Vitality, as this exposure kind of happened and they started losing and stuff, they have made adjustments and they proved that, yeah, they are of world class. When they have things rolling, they are still that team. I think G2 versus Vitality, probably one of the best series on LAN. I think this one could have went to like could have went either way. And you see that in the game differentials and how many OTs there were. Like it was a fight. You could have very well saw Vitality in the finals. So I think Vitality, I'm still not 100% convinced. I need a little bit more out of them, but Vitality on LAN is always a team that I'm going to be fearful of if this roster is what it is. Uh, and let's say what it is. The only reason that Vitality made it as far as they did in that game is because Zen was 1v2ing. There'd be times Zen would go for an air dribble and literally just muscle his way past the G2 defense. So uh, with that in mind, I think Vitality as a team, still some polish that is needed, but competitive, definitely competitive. And I think you could shift again, any of these teams around a tiny bit, but it's not a one horse race. And I'll clarify that at the very end. Um, outside of them, we go up next and it's G2. And some people may think this one's a little bit too low, to which I say, go hang out with teammates. Um, G2 to me was not convincing uh, in Swiss and rightfully so they went 3-2 I think G2 had some things they needed to figure out and the difficulty is the conversations that have been had which is we need to play how we practice and on land that's not easy to do I think G2 as a team very talented Daniel has proven that he is him and with the right surroundings but I think the reason why I give G2 the nod is true team effort Daniel's defense and setup game was incredible Beast mode ability to create opportunities off the of ceiling and flip resets. Probably one of the best in the world at it. Atomic shots were on point. Sapphire and Swiss. There was games where they were 0 for 22. I think there was one game in particular where I think beast mode alone on his shots was like 0 for 13. It's not acceptable. But they still found ways to win. They're still competitive. They still went to the grand final. Like G2 is a resilient team and I've been using resiliency a lot as a, as a kind of a, maybe a cope word or a, a filler word, but I think G2 as a team has shown that they can play at the pace. They can be aggressive. They can assert a play style because in a majority of G2 series, if you look at them, they are on the offensive front. They are controlling the game. It's just a matter of, is it going to hit the crossbar? Or is it going to go in the back of the net? But G2 is a team that very assertive still at times. I think when you go head to head, can they pull out another world-class performance? Can they do what they did to Vitality? Can they do what they did to BDS? I'm not exactly sold on it just yet because I do think nine out of 10 times I'm going to go EU and maybe that's a little bit biased. Um, I say that, but we're going across uh, to Europe, but in a completely different way. And uh, we're going with, which I think everybody has this one coming. We're going with Falcons. I think Falcons as a team, let's call it what it is. Their only loss came to the team that won the whole thing. And they beat K Corp and Vitality, two teams that I consider very, very solid along the way. They then get into your top eight. And I think they lost to inexperience. To call it what it is, Falcons has the Twins and TRK, all very, very talented players, but they are still newly formed together. I don't think they've been challenged as much as we would like to see within Mina, because let's call it what it is. Like Mina's a two, three team region. You've got this new up and coming team rock. You've got rule one. And then yes, there's like bravado and some other ones in there, but like 
Falcons hasn't really had to handle adversity all that much yet. They've been absolutely fucking dominant. Like, Falcons is a damn good team. And as they go up against these top rosters more frequently, then they will be able to make, and we talked about this on my stream earlier, being able to make notable changes, adjustments. Like, let's call it what it is. They drop zero goals in the first two games against K-Corp. They call a timeout. And by the way, this was a last second goal, okay? But they call that timeout, they lock in, and then they go 11 for two in goal differential. They threw that game. They threw that game. At the same time, KC continues to be as icy as it gets. They find ways to win. That's what makes them the best. But let's call it what it is. Falcons could have most definitely won that. And I think if Falcons, selfishly, if I think Falcons beats KC there, they probably beat Gentlemates and they go on to the grand finals. And then from there, who knows? But like, Falcons is good. And that level of confidence is the reason why I put them above G2. For now. We'll see how it goes. I think the real question is, you could probably put this tied for third, but Falcons G2, I want to watch it so bad. I want to watch that series so bad. I even manipulated my bracket and predictions last week to make sure it happened in the second round, and it never did, and it frustrates me. So, again, very tough, but you guys already know the last two, and these should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, Gentlemates and K-Corp. Uh, long story short, I'm not going to bore you to death on this one because this video is already going long enough. Gentlemates won the whole thing. I get that. That's great. That's cool. It's one event and an event where all of these teams were trading wins where they're super close coming down to the wire. They were coin flips. Call what it is. Genji could have just as easily be uh, Gentlemates. K Corp could have just as easily lost to Falcons. There is a way that you look at these when these came head to head that K Corp could have beat this one or the other route. I don't think it is objectively easy to say this team is better than others. So when I see that, I go look at historical evidence. I go look at previous results. K Corp is three for three in regionals and still one game away from going to the grand finals. And if you think that one result is enough to say that they are the best, Thanks for I, I don't know if you know ball. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. But I think K Corp being at the results that they have, have shown the consistency, have shown the resiliency, have shown... That they are that team and they are still in my opinion the best in the world now with that in mind is alpine going to revert back to how they looked online or are they going to continue to be able to play to the level that they did where they are cutting rotations and juicy as being a difference maker and all those types of things that is what i want to see online in qualifier four five and six that is why i still have a little bit of hesitancy because i love the alpine roster i think they're very very good I, I talked about it during my predictions on land. Expect Juicy and Itachi to step up. And we totally forgot to mention Seiko, which makes sense. But let's call it what it is. The whole run for Alpine, plus three goal differential. Over the course of all of these matches, a plus three goal differential. They're not winning convincingly. They're not putting people out, but they're winning. And that's where the credit is due. So credits to Alpine. I, I still don't know... I think that's the difficult thing for where to place Alpine. And the reason why I am moving them up is because I do rate major wins heavily. Um, but one goal games, very close the whole way, like deserves a round of applause, man. Like for them to say, hey, we're going to win 1-0, 2-1 in just about every single game. It's going to be super close and we're going to not back down with our lead. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Either way, that's my top 10. That's what I've got for the power rankings. I'm excited to see... Uh, these new rosters in action and how these things adjust. But I'm curious to hear what you guys have. Let me know in the comments down below what your top 10 is. Maybe you guys think I'm absolutely crazy for some of these and rightfully so. But I've also had people come in and be like, this is the most unbiased list and we've really enjoyed it. So curious on what you got. Either way, you guys enjoy the content. Like, subscribe, notifications, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.